my usual you know rate of speaking is very very fast so I am going to try to speak slowly if I go too fast somebody please like do this so I know to slow down otherwise you know I'm excited about what I'm talking about so as I said my usual rate is very very fast um, yeah so what I'm going to talk about well first I'm going to talk about Ansible um, now, who here had a chance to kind of work with Ansible in the past? All right, so not all of you. Uh, great, so I can kind of make you see some new things. Um, the other thing, so playbooks, tasks, roles are things that Ansible deals with. Um, I'm going to talk about like the main thing we're going to talk about is extending Ansible. So I'm going to talk about like why are we going to extend Ansible. Um, then. We'll talk about the ways to extend Ansible, which include modules and plugins. Eventually, we'll take a look about how to actually write a module, how to write several kinds of plugins, and eventually how we can take those extensions and distribute them so other people can use them. Um, my name is Barack. I work at uh, Red Hat. You can see from my red shirt. Um, I am involved in, in several projects. Uh, two prominent ones are Overt, which is an open source virtualization software, um, competes with things like VMware, um, and another one is KubeVirt, which is checking, taking virtualization to the next level by uh, in putting uh, Kubernetes in the picture. Um, all right, so what is Ansible? So this is like the, the source of, of this term. Uh, Ansible is, is used in, in science fiction to describe uh, a communications device you can use to communicating with, uh, you know, distant planets, usually at speeds that are kind of faster than light speed. Um, originally appeared in some book by Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, now we are talking about not that kind of Ansible, but the Ansible software. Um, it's a little bit different. It's uh, well, the idea of Ansible is that you have like, you know, hardware or software devices. You can have servers, you can have switches, you can have routers, you can have virtual devices, you know, virtual machines, um, you know, cloud instances, things like that. Um, and Ansible essentially lets you just connect to all of them and control them. And the way you do it is you write playbooks. Um, playbooks are, you know, kinds of piece, little pieces of software. Um, you use a YAML-based language to write them, and we're going to look at a playbook in a second. Um, so here is a little example of a playbook. Uh, now, playbook usually starts by selecting things you're going to work on. Um, you can select them, like usually you need an inventory of things to work on. You can either write your inventory as you know, a file, or you can kind of import it from various places if you have a database of your devices or you're using cloud and you can communicate with your cloud software to ask about your you know, cloud instances. Um, so you select the things you're going to work on and then you kind of specify tasks to do on them. Um, so, and when you specify tasks, you essentially use modules to determine what the tasks actually do. So you have like a user model, for example, that creates users. Um, and the modules get parameters that, you know, determine exactly what happens. Um, now the thing about those parameters, you can write values right there and then, or you can use um, something called Jinja2, which is, should be familiar to anybody who has ever used Django. It's a language that, in Django, it lets you kind of embed values in HTML files or in, in anything you output from your system. And it's used pretty much to the, the same way in, in Ansible. You kind of use it to embed values into your playbooks. And the values can, can come from multiple places, you know, from environment variables and other kinds of places. Um, and you can also process them with all the things that Jinja lets you use, like filters. Um, you can also have loops, um, you know, same task, happening multiple times on multiple pieces of data. You can have conditions, um, you know, do this, when that. Um, and the last thing is that you have what is called roles. Roles in Ansible are kind of like functions and modules in Python. It's a way to kind of take multiple tasks or other things, you know, and put them together so you can treat all of them as, as one unit. Um, roles are also the way you kind of share things uh, in Ansible. Um, 
So why are we going to extend Ansible? Like, what is our motivation for doing that? And you know, what is the motivation for talking about it in PyCon? Um, so first, you know, Ansible is written in Python, so it could be interesting for people coming to PyCon. And also, it's very easy to extend Ansible in Python. Um, now, why would we want to extend it? So uh, if we have a new kind of hardware device, for example, or a new kind of software, and we want to manage it with Ansible, we will need to extend Ansible to do it. Um, or if we need to do new kinds of actions. Um, another thing is that Ansible also have kind of generic ways of doing things. It can run command line commands, for example. It can query RESTful APIs. Um, so there are many things you can do with Ansible, even for devices that supposedly is not supporting directly, but it can become very, very complex. So sometimes we can start writing very complex modules and roles, uh, uh, sorry, playbooks and roles, and then we can decide that, you know, writing, putting that logic inside a new module, for example, will make it a, lot to, a whole lot simpler to use in the future. Now we can also talk about why not to extend Ansible. So this should be a classic XKCD, it should be familiar for everybody. Um, essentially, don't reinvent wheels or don't, you know, make better mousetraps. You know, if Ansible already almost does it, consider carefully if you really need to write that new model. Um, all right. So, how do we extend Ansible? Well, I already talked about modules. Modules are the way that Ansible does things. Um, they actually run directly on the devices that you manage with Ansible. Um, and you can actually write them in any language you want. Um, it's nicer to write them in Python. I'll say why in a minute. Um, and then you have plugins. Now, plugins essentially you know, talk directly into the Ansible uh, code. Um, you have many different kinds of plugins that do different things. And because Ansible itself is written in Python, you have to write plugins in Python. And they are running on the machine where you run Ansible itself. Um, by the way, any questions so far? Because I kind of like having questions like in the middle and not uh, to the end. So if you have anything to ask, please stop me. Um, all right. So just a little, I'm not going to read all this table, like just a little example of the amount of plugin types we have, which are the things you can do with plugins. Now the real list is kind of, I think it's about three times longer. So just a couple of examples here, like you have, a, um, for example, lookup plugins that let you query remote data sources from Ansible to get data from places. And you can have filter plugins that add filter functions to Jinja too. So just a couple of examples. And you can look at this slide. Um, and see many other examples there. All right, so we're going to write a model. I am going to show you guys how to write a model. Um, so before we can write a model, we need to kind of talk a little bit about how models actually work. Um, so you have your Ansible, the machine where you installed Ansible and from where you control everything, and you have your devices that you're going to manage. Um, and the thing about Ansible, is that you don't actually need to pre-install anything on the managed devices. Um, they call it uh, agentless man management. So essentially, your modules are also on the control machine. So when you actually use a module in a playbook, um, Ansible first copies that module to the remote machine. Um, that's the first thing it does. And once it does this, it can, you know, run it there, execute it, and then it gives it input. It just generates a JSON file that contains everything the model needs to know, um, all the parameters you need to pass to it and things like that, and gives it into the model, uh, into its you know input stream. Um, the model then goes around to doing its thing, um, and it generates output. You know, the output could be, you know, I succeeded, and this is what I changed, or I failed, and here is the error message things like that, and sends it back to Ansible that then, you know, shows it to the user or let you, you know, decide what to do next. Um, now, the nice thing about writing models in Python is that Ansible also ships with a bunch of Python libraries that make it very easy to write models. Um, and then um, when it sends model over, it can also figure out which Python libraries that model uses, and it also copies them over to the target machine. So you have them there. All right, so let's 
start writing a model. So first, let's kind of try to describe what are we going to, yes. We're going to write a model. What's that model is going to do? So let's say we actually have like a real Ansible device that can communicate across, you know, star systems and, and do nifty things like that. And that's a very, you know, exotic kind of device. It has black holes and power force fields and things like that. But as it turns out, usually when you build such devices, you end up having some kind of a control machine that is just a Linux server connected to all the exotic hardware and, and, and controlling everything. And that machine essentially gives you the, the API to use the device. And then we can, once you have that, you can consider, you know, having Ansible running on your laptop, talking to that machine to kind of, you know, use the Ansible device from your Ansible playbooks. Um, so that's what the kind of model we're trying to write right now. So first, let's see what, what would the API for the Ansible device would look like. Um, so let's say we have like this Ansible device Python module on the Ansible device itself, and that Python module essentially gives us a send message function that you know takes a planet name and the message and essentially sends it over, um, and it can gives us an, an exception. So you know if we failed say, to send a message for some reason, we can know that that happened and react or something. Um, so that's the API. So what would using the Ansible module we're going to write going to look like? Um, so here is an example playbook. So you can see I have this Ansible message, Ansible module here I can use. Uh, yeah, that can get confusing. Ansible models, Python models, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, and essentially that Ansible module takes parameters, you know, what you'd expect, the destination of the message and the message itself, and then it will send the message for us. Now you can also see here, me here mentioning an Ansible message role, and I'm going to talk in a second about why I'm doing that. Um, so we're going to write a module. Now, you're going to write anything in Python. The first question you ask yourself, all right, I need to create a Python file where I'm going to put that file so it will do what it needs to do. So there are actually multiple, and you know, the second question is maybe what I'm going to call that file. So the name of the file actually must be the name of the Ansible module you're going to create. Now, the location of the file, there are multiple options. But if you're going to want to share your model with other people, it's a good idea to just put the model inside an Ansible role. Um, now, how you go about doing that? Well, essentially, you can create a roles directory next to where you would put your playbooks. Inside that role, the roles directory, you create a directory for your role. The name of that directory is the name of the role. Here, it's Ansible message, which is the same name of the model, but it could be different. Um, and then inside your role directory, you create a library directory, and there your module files can be. So let's start looking at our module code. So you start with some, I'd say, boilerplate. Like there are multiple things here that are meant to actually make the code work kind of the same on Python 2 and 3. I'm not going to go too much into them. One of the nice things is that you kind of have to include documentation with your module. And there is kind of a format where you can specify all kinds of pieces of documentation. You can also include examples, and that's very, very useful if you do it. Um, and once we got that out of the way, we can start with our actual module code. Um, and one of the first thing you would want to do if you write your module in Python is to actually instantiate the Ansible module um, class. Um, now, there are a couple of different styles here. Some people do it like this, other people actually they're going to inherit from that class and, in, and instantiate their child class. I've seen models that do it either way. Um, here, I kind of, for simplicity, I'm just instantiating it. Now, the nice thing about this kind of class is that it can take all kinds of pieces of information about the input we need for the model and can do all the input parsing and validation for us. So here, I'm kind of describing the parameters that we need. And it will do all the parsing and validation for me. So once this passes, I know I have my input like sorted out the way I need it, and I don't need to worry about it at all. Um, so I have my input. You know, it ends up in the params uh, attribute of the module object I just created. And here, because the parameters for the model are exact, have the exact same names as the names of the arguments of the send message function of the Ansible device. API model. Um, I can just you know pass them over, 
um, you know, just expanding that mod parameters dict into the function parameters. Um, and that's essentially it will send the message for me. Now, the next thing I'm doing here is you need to kind of handle failures and translate them from, you know, Python exceptions into module results. Otherwise, Ansible will not be able to kind of understand the error and show it properly to the people using your model. Um, so that's, es that's es essentially a model, right? That's all you need to do. All right. Uh, Let's have a quick look at the lookup plugin. Um, it's one kind of plugin. It's very simple. It's a plugin that lets you query external data sources from Ansible. Um, so again, the same example. We have an Ansible device, and there is a, everything we already talked about. But we found out that Ansible, the Ansible device is kind of picky about planet names. Like when you want to send message to Earth, it must be Earth, E, A, R, whatever, with capital E. And if you want to say, for example, Kadu Aretz, that would not work. Um, so we would like to have some kind of you know, a database where you can have all kind of other names and have the translation happen for us. So we can have the database you know, attached to the machine where we run Ansible, and we need a way to query it. Um, so let's suppose, again, we have this kind of API. We have a PlanetDB Python module, and that have a lookup function where you can give it a planet name and you essentially get the canonical name that will match whatever the Ansible device needs. Um, so again, how would we use it from a playbook? We're actually using the Ansible Jinja lookup function. It's a function where you give it a name of a lookup plugin and the parameters for that lookup plugin and it will essentially run the plugin, the plugin will do the lookup and the whole function gives you the output back. All right. So again, we, we're going to have this lookup plugin, and this is how you're kind of going to be able to use it from your Ansible playbook. Um, where would you put the file for a lookup plugin? Similar idea, you can put it inside a role. This time, the directory you create inside the role is going to be called lookup plugins. It's not very surprising. The name of the Python file you're going to create is the same name as the plugin you're writing. Here is all the code for the lookup plugin. This is essentially all of it. I'm going to go into Bavarti very quickly. Uh, you need to create a class called lookup module. You need to inherit from lookup base. And you need to implement a method called run. That method gets everything that has been passed to the plugin. The terms are essentially what the plugin needs to look up. And then you can kind of use whatever way you need to look up. Here we're using the API for the planet DB we just described to kind of look up the terms uh, and give them back. And again, you need to handle errors and return them Ansible with Ansible kind of exceptions because Ansible doesn't know how to understand other kinds of exceptions. So you need to be careful about errors and make sure you translate them to Ansible exceptions. And, and that's essentially everything from the lookup device. Now, um, I'm not going to go into action plugin because of lack of time. Um, it's a little bit more complex um, because I do want to kind of mention how do you distribute your extensions. So since we put everything in roles, roles were meant to be shared. So the way you share role is, is very, very simple. You kind of take all your role, like all the directories you had for your role, and you put all of that in the Git repository, and you put it somewhere public, yeah, like say GitHub. Um, but it could be in other Git repository. And then when people want to use your role, everything they need to do is write a requirements YAML file, and that's pretty similar to a Python requirements txt file, and you essentially it's there the uh, Git repositories where your roles you want to use are, and you list the version of the role. You know if there are branches in the repository, the version is essentially the name of the branch or a tag. Um, you can give a, a role a different name. You know by default the name of the role will, go, will be the name of the repository, but you can have it have a different name locally. Um, and then you write this command, ansible galaxy install dash r requirements txt, and it will install all the roles for you, and then you can use them from your playbooks. So it's that easy. Um, now in Python, we have PyPI for kind of finding modules and getting them. Ansible has a similar thing. It's called the Ansible Galaxy website, and you can register your roles there, and then people can search for them and find them and, and use them. Um, and that's essentially all I had. Uh, thank you very much. So the source for code for everything you've seen is available. 
and you can play with it. Thank you very much.